Hello everybody, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. This is a special video that I wanted to put together about Payday 2. I've been wanting to do a video of general streaming on Payday 2 for a while, but there's been some bad news that's happened lately. And I wanted to explain it to people who have either not played Payday 2 or have been a casual player to Payday 2 and why a lot of people are upset. So first, you can see that I've been playing the game for quite a long time. Level Infamy 16, which is their, which is their um, legacy system, or no, I'm sorry, their veterancy system for those of you who play Call of Duty. And I've been playing the game since pretty much launch. I've bought all the DLC. I have the overkill, completely overkill safe back there. So yeah, I'm definitely a fan of Payday 2. It's been my go-to game for a while. But, like most veterans, I'm definitely annoyed with what they've done lately. So, here's what's been happening over the last four years of Payday 2. They've released numerous, numerous, very numerous DLC for the game. Some of it's been free, some of it has been paid for. Stuff like uh, Halloween events, new heist, the infamy update, these have been free. And then they've released DLC, such as weapon packs, masks, stuff like that. As you can see, we got a lot of DLC here. And a lot of people have been annoyed about DLC. They've called it pay to win. And in my opinion, this kind of DLC is not pay to win in the sense that you're buying it and it's giving a huge advantage to it. It's on the line. That's been the big debate over the last four years since they've switched to this DLC model. All this DLC has been adding new content. It's been changing how you play the game. It adds new weapon mods, new masks, etc. But the game has been co-op oriented. So a lot of people have been, you know, shrugging and letting it go. But technically, even though I said it isn't pay to win, it's just so close on that line. For those of you who haven't been to GameWisdom.com, I made a very popular post where I define pay to win as the following. Pay to win is if a developer introduces exclusive content that can only be acquired through real money. So for instance, excuse me, for instance, League of Legends, um, De uh, excuse me, Defense D Dota 2, stuff like that, that's not considered pay to win. Because with League of Legends, all the content that changes the gameplay can be bought using in-game currency. I could spend, you know, 10, 20 hours playing the game and getting enough points to buy champions, or I can just spend three, four dollars and they're mine. Another part of that's not considered pay to win are cosmetic items because they do not positively impact the game experience. So Team Fortress 2 having all the graphical effects, stuff like that, that's not considered pay to win, and you can find some of those or craft them in game. And keep Team Fortress 2 in the back of your mind for the next minute, because that is a huge point on the differentiation between this and what other games have done, why people are so upset with Overkill. So, as you can see, lots of DLC, and this has all been good, adds content to the game. It's grown the game dramatically. It's what has kept Overkill and Payday 2 going for the last four years. And it's really what's helped them rise up to be a big name in the game industry. So, uh, with all that said, let's get to why people are upset. It's got to do with these. Safes. For those of you who haven't played Pay2, there's been a whole lot of stuff about saves, drilling saves, breaking into them. The update, or what's been their big 10-day plan with Crime Fest, the first day has introduced these safes. And what they do is, this is pretty much similar to the crates in the Manco update from Team Fortress 2. If you look on the right hand side, you can see that the safe contains one of the following items, and they're rated in order of normal, rare, super rare, I'm not sure what their actual names are, and then something even better than that. 
And I mean, this is cool. It's tied into their card system. Every time you pay a heist, you have a chance at some random reward. So right there, that's pretty neat. But then you go to open it. And the only way to open it is you have to spend money. Basically, you have to spend $2.50 per item. You buy a drill that opens these safes. And what's in these safes are weapon skins. The low-level ones will simply just change the look of the gun. You know, pure cosmetic. We see this in Team Fortress. We see this in Counter-Strike Go. But when you get to the higher tier, these and down here, the skins will actually change the property of the weapon. It will either give it new specific mods or alter its functionality in some way. Now, of course, it's not going to be... I've heard varying things about how big of a difference it is. Some say it's maybe like three points of concealment, four points of accuracy. But then there's some saying that the super rare ones really change the gun. And this is what's got people upset for two reasons. First, during an interview in 2013 by former game director Dave Goldfarb, who I actually interviewed on a podcast, I think around that time, he said that he would never want to see microtransactions into Payday 2. Obviously, that has been used as a major point here. And the problem is that Payday 2 and Overkill have been pretty much relying on DLC as their main form of continued profit. It's what has allowed them to fund Crime Fest. It's what's kept them going and building Payday 2 to the audience that they have now. The problem with this is that this is definitely pay-to-win territory. As I said earlier, the content that you get with the DLC falls on that line because you are buying improvements. You're buying basically new work that's being done to the game. Even though it does add new weapons, which we can see right here quickly. Stuff like new shotguns, new sniper rifles, grenade launchers. I can come over here. We've got stuff like even a pistol crossbow. So they've definitely have been improving the game. They've added a lot of stuff with this DLC. New characters like... Um, Jiro, Sokol, Bonnie, the whole deal here. Melee, I mean, the, I could spend five more minutes going over everything that they've added. But the point is that where Payday 2 is now is completely different from where Payday 2 was at launch. They have a lot of content. And the thing is that a lot of it has been... It makes it a lot easier to play the game. And this is why a lot of people were complaining about the DLC being pay to win. And as I said, it's why we've been trying, we've been sort of ignoring that because we're getting great stuff. But this new system that is just pure microtransaction is definitely pay to win. And it's one of the worst kinds because you have no control of what you get. If you go back to the safe here, it's completely random. So you're spending $2.50 for basically gambling on something. And it may not even be a skin for item that you like to use. And, and to put this in perspective, most of the DLC packs cost between 4 or $5 to about $7 for the ones that have like a heist, a character, stuff like that. So spending two fifty dollars on a drill is almost akin to half of what you would normally get for weapons, achievements, masks, um, mask mods, stuff like that. And that's what's very annoying. The price just doesn't um, f work with what's currently in the game. If this, if the drills are maybe 25 cents, 50 cents, it's essentially like you're putting a quarter in a machine, that would have been a lot better. But the thing that annoys everyone is that this would have been the perfect opportunity to solve one of Pay 2's biggest problems. Look how much money I have right now. I have 358 million. I have 3 billion in my offshore, which is the sort of like the meta money that you use to upgrade, like infamy, get um, weapon slots, stuff like that. There's nothing else to spend this money on. This would have been the perfect opportunity to say, hey, for you know a million dollars, you could get a drill. 
or you know something like that to make it worth it in game and this is the big differentiating point between Team Fortress and Payday 2 and what Overkill has failed to understand. People are more accepting of microtransactions and stuff like that if they're given a choice between val excuse me, valuing time or money. When you play Team Fortress, everything that all the weapons, all the funky items that you can get, they can be found simply by playing the game. And if I want to make something, I can then break down the items I don't want and craft them. In this play, in this regard, I value money more than I do time. So I can get this gray stuff, it's just going to take me more time. The other option is someone can go to the Manco store, spend $20, buy a variety of goods and stuff that they want, and go that way because they value their money more than they value spending, you know, two, three weeks getting this stuff. And that's all right. Because both options are there, Team Fortress 2 avoids being pay to win. Because you have the freedom to decide what you value more. With Payday 2, however, this new edition is just pure pay to win. I can't get this stuff through in-game cash, through in-game playing. I have to spend my money. They're not giving you the option to value time or money more. And again, they've had this for so long that would, this would have been perfect to tie into that because it would finally give us some actual money sink that we can make use of all the time. And that would have been fine if they would have said either spend 250 or a billion in offshore, it would, that would have been fine. Even if that would have been an extreme amount, it would still let you decide what you value more, money or time. And with this, and to make it worse, this happened on the first day of their big crime fest, so it's really cast a dark shadow over the next nine days. A lot of people are very upset. A lot of them are changing their Steam reviews. There's been uh, reports. I think Dave Goldford was like quoted to say, like, this is why he left, or something along those mon oh, sorry, something along that matter. And it's just a very bad thing. And it would have been so easy to make this a positive again by giving the value between time and money and that's one of those big lessons and big takeaways for anyone who's making a free-to-play game or making with microtransactions and content if you want people to be more accepting of it you have to give them that freedom of choice and again even if it is a huge, huge time sink versus a small money sink, it's still giving them the option. I mean, I've spent, thanks to sales and whatnot, I may have spent like $80, $90 on all the stuff for over the last four years with Payday 2, but there's still over $100 worth of DLC. And to have this option that, again, I have no control over what I'm getting, except I know I'm spending 250 on it, it's just not a good model for this game. Now, of course, there is the chance that Overkill will rescind this. People are, you know, lighting the, the torches, getting the pitchforks ready. And I want, I'm want. i really curious to see what they're going to do with this because the idea is pretty cool to have weapon skins that give you some passive bonuses, to have this additional layer of content to go after, but they completely miss the point of making the microtransactions fair to everyone. And again, it's definitely a huge mistake on their part to not properly prepare the community and just understand why people play these types of games and what, when the microtransactions work. They should have looked at Team Fortress, League of Legends, stuff like that. Especially when you introduce stuff that changes the game. As I said earlier, if you release premium content that possibly impacts the game experience, but can only be bought through real money, that definitely falls on the pay-to-win side. And that's what this is right now. I hope that they don't take from this that they people don't want the weapon augments because that's what I like. But they, well, I hope they learn 
why Team Fortress 2 is so popular and why they have been able to work so well with the system. Because again, Team Fortress 2 started out as just a regular retail game and it has since evolved dramatically and it's still going strong. I have friends playing it for hours upon hours of play. But yeah, I hope that has helped fill in the blanks about why people are so upset and why this is such a big piece of news regarding Payday 2. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely go to GameWisdom.com and look at my post on Pay to Win and Defining because that will help frame this conversation more. I will put a link to it in the notes below. And anyway, thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel. Check out Game Wisdom and of course our ongoing Patreon campaign. That is on Patreon under Josh Bice or Game Wisdom, and any donations would be greatly appreciated. And lastly, for my general streams, that is under GW Bicer on Twitch, most nights at 10 Eastern. I don't know if I'll ever do a Payday 2 stream, but there, will, there are so many games to stream on there. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and take care.